The National Cybersecurity Center published this article a couple of days ago about their website scanning program that has been operating in the UK. If you have web servers in the UK, maybe you've already gotten some correspondence from them, or at the very least, you might have seen their IPs scanning your server in your system logs. Now, right away, they tell us why they're carrying out the scanning activities. They say that it's to make the UK the safest place to live and to do business online. They want to better understand the vulnerabilities that are out there being exploited, at least in the UK cyberspace, and they want to better help business owners understand their security posture on a day-to-day -day basis. So essentially, they're trying to make sure that systems that are configured in the UK are secure, thus making the UK's internet as a whole more secure. It's like real life internet policing, but I guess it's the good kind where people are being made more aware of vulnerabilities, on the websites that they have. I guess it's more like a neighborhood watch systems. And they also post advisories about how to patch zero days. Like we can see this article that they posted here about the Apache Log4j vulnerabilities. Those were a big deal late last year. And they also tell us some software that's using it. Like we can see Apache Struts 2, uh, Apache Solar, Apache Druid. So all these different softwares that are using it. I think there's actually a link to, um, yeah, they've got links to more information. They've got uh, links to this GitHub, which I think is a list of software that's using Log4j. So that way you can go against that when you are auditing your system to see whether it, or not it's present in your software stack. And they also give us a way to mitigate the problem. So they tell us that we can just disable uh, that Jindy lookup class in our class path. So this would have been really, really helpful last year. And they actually posted this, I believe, just one day, yeah, December 10th, one day after the log4j vulnerability was publicly disclosed. So this is a pretty handy program for people that are building their own websites, especially if they are doing so independently. And what I mean by independent website building is there's some managed services that have become very popular in the past few years, like Shopify, Wix, and Square. These are all services that help you build a website. And the way that they do it is they remove a lot of the technical aspects and knowledge, things that you would either need to know already or things that you would definitely learn about during the process of building a website from scratch. Like you don't have to even think about SSH firewalls, web server rules. You don't have to think about bandwidth or load balancing usually. They just sum it up into price plans. Uh, you don't have to do any coding in the front end to change how your site looks. They have content management systems, uh, actually pretty similar to the block editor in WordPress to let you just easily resize things, uh, change color and stuff like that. Maybe you guys are familiar with it. Uh, but what really attracts people, or what I think really attracts people that want a website to these services instead of them just doing it from scratch or even using something like WordPress, which makes the content management, like actually building pages super easy. You don't have to code to do it with WordPress. I think what makes people want these is the fact that these managed sites take care of security and they also take care of some optimizations. But the main thing is the security because people are worried about getting hacked. But I wouldn't say that Shopify sites or you know Wix sites, whatever, uh, are Fort Knox and they never get hacked. They definitely do. Usually the way that hacking these services go down is people compromise the account itself, similar to how you would hack someone's email if they're using Gmail. You're probably not gonna find any technical issues in the way that Google has set up their mail, but you might be able to get someone to give you their Gmail password, or in this case, their Shopify password, and then you can do whatever you want to their website. Now, despite the popularity of these managed services, I really don't recommend them to people, even if they aren't that tech savvy, because A, these are way more expensive than setting something up yourself. B, the security that these sites are providing to you is completely obscured away. It's not like when you sign up with Shopify, they have an expert that sits with you and shows you, you know, how to do website security, how to do this and that. Uh, no, you're just, 
giving them the wheel and hoping that they set up everything properly. And if they fail to do that, you haven't learned any skills to pick up the slack. And C, the biggest reason to not use managed services is their TOS. They usually have a clause in their terms of service where they reserve the right to just shut you down whenever they feel like it for whatever reason they want. So independent web dev is the way to go. And to tie things back into NCSC, I think that this scanning service that they are doing is going to help empower the amateur web devs to go with the better option because this is pretty much penetration testing as a public utility, security audits as a public utility at least for people that are in the UK. It's a government program, so of course your taxes are paying for it at the end of the day, but it's still probably a better deal than paying more money for Shopify or losing business because your website got taken down by hackers. And you know, now that I think about it, I don't even think that there's any checks that are being done on the servers that they're scanning to see if they're owned or being operated by a UK citizen. So if you're not in the UK, you might have a little loophole to get some free pen testing if you just set up a box that happens to be within the UK borders. Uh, so something to think about. Now, I wanted to get more details on what exactly is involved with an NCSC scan. You know, what are they actually looking for? What software are they actually running? Uh, and I only got some vague details on this page. Like they tell us here under how is scanning performed, that they first need to determine the existence of specific protocols or services that are being used by analyzing the responses that are coming from the server they're scanning. Now, in the world of penetration testing, this really doesn't tell us anything uh, because we're always gonna be doing this step in some way, shape, or form. This is kind of the same as telling someone that to build a house, you're gonna have to hammer some nails and pour some concrete. So I found this page with some more information on scanning made easy. And if we scroll down a little bit uh, where it says solid technology, we can get some information about the SME scripts. We can see that they are written using the Nmap scripting engine. So if you haven't heard about this, Nmap is one of the more fundamental tools that are used for scanning devices and services on a network during a security audit. You can see ports that are open, both TCP and UDP, and the more aggressive Nmap scans can be used to determine what operating systems are running on a target and what underlying software is running on the system. And of course, if the software that is running is found to be vulnerable, like if it's a vulnerable version, then the malicious hacker is going to try to exploit that vulnerability. Or in the case of having uh, a white hack, you know, you're getting a penetration test that you paid for, then they're going to see if they can escalate privileges and do things like that. So mass Nmap scans being done by the UK government to try to make people more secure. And you can tell if you're being scanned because there are two distinct IP addresses that they used. Uh, so this one, 18.1717.246 and 35.1771231. And you can also see uh, these headers, the NCSC scanning agent in some cases as well. So like I said, this is probably helpful to some people that are developing websites, getting a scan from their government to see if they have any vulnerabilities and then getting contacted in some way about that. But of course, it's limited to boxes that are in the UK. And the main thing is that Nmap scans are really easy to do yourself. And you guys know that I prefer independent solutions over government solutions. So. It's best to make yourself familiar with Nmap so that you can use it to scan your websites and your web services at your own leisure, as well as boxes that are on your land because Nmap can be used on your land. Uh, and I know some of you are thinking, oh man, first you tell me that I have to learn web dev, like actually learn web dev instead of using Shopify. And now you also want me to become lay epic hacker as well. Look, no, okay, running Nmap isn't rocket science, okay? Look at these commands here. 
It's a simple command line utility with options to scan different ports for hosts. You can scan multiple host domains and subdomains. You can run scripts to do software and OS fingerprinting, find areas for SQL injection, and so on. Uh, so this is a tool that you could basically be very familiar with in just one afternoon of playing with it. Uh, definitely make some time to learn Nmap. In fact, get yourself a Kali Linux virtual machine, or you could just load it from a live USB stick. And this comes with all of the same tools that hackers are using. It comes with everything that you need to find vulnerabilities. There's even tools to automatically exploit vulnerabilities. Like if you want to, you know, the main uh, hackers out there that you're gonna have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis are script kiddies. You're probably not gonna find a whole lot of people that actually have real penetration uh, testing skills, real hacking skills, trying to break into your box because they've got bigger fish to fry. But as far as automated scanning goes, using Metasploit and stuff like that, you could learn how to use all of it fairly easily. They, they call script kitties script kitties for a reason because this stuff is literally so easy that kids can do it. Uh, and that way you can actually get a really good uh, security audit, probably way more in depth than what NCSC is providing uh, for your own boxes at your own leisure. They might be making things a little bit better with their periodic scans that they're doing for the public, but it's no excuse for giving up on your own digital literacy, and it's nowhere near as convenient as just scanning things yourself. But what do you guys think about governments starting to offer up scanning services like this. I actually do think that it is a step in the right direction because here in the US, I just assume that all my internet facing machines are being scanned by the NSA anyway, but they don't actually reach out to me when I have vulnerabilities. Uh, they probably just write it down and put that note in their back pocket. And this service that the UK offers, it does have an option to opt out if you don't want them scanning you. So. Yeah, I think that this is much better than what the Alphabet Boys do for us here in Burgerland, but give me your thoughts on it in the comment below. Like and share this video to hack the algorithm, and have a great rest of your day.